Happy Sunday, everybody. Benjamin here again. Let's do another quick video. It's Sunday. I'm waiting to pick up my little man. Every Sunday I pick him up. I uh, got a little bit of time to kill. Let's try a, a quick video. Uh, I'm going to call this, well, let's, let's see. Let's get to divorcing divorce. Divorcing divorce. Divorcing the divorce. All right. Good read right here. I recommend this. Paul Tillich, The Courage to Be, The Courage to Be. Paul Tillich. Um, I've had a lot of coffee this morning, so uh, I'm ready. Let's go. Um, listen, uh, the last video I did, I started reading Paul Tillich a couple months back, and the last video I did was after I was back home, and a friend of mine had tragically committed suicide, and I talked about the courage to be. Um, let's give a shot at possibility the courage to love, and maybe even the courage to divorce, right? Um, in this book that I'm reading here, Paul Tillich talks about, um, two different things, a lot of things, but let's, let's just make it simple and boil it down. Anxiety and fear, anxiety and fear. And he talks about the gen, just generalized, somebody who has suffered myself, suffering from, um, anxiety in the past, particularly when I lived overseas, I, I felt like when I lived in Japan, I lived in Japan two, two different times, I really struggled with anxiety, just this generalized, couldn't quite put my finger on what what I was, what the anxiety was for and why, right? Now, he talks about pe just a lot of people suffering from anxiety and how anxiety is just this generalized fear of the future, generalized, um, you're not sure what it is, but something's there. Something's out to get you. There's a monster under the bed. There's a monster in the closet type of thinking and that it's going to happen. It's going to come upon you, right? And at any time now, you're going to meet your demise or your worst nightmare, whatever it is. And he talks about anxiety versus fear. And he, and he says how like we need to be transitioning our anxieties to fear. Because the thing with fear is that fear can be, it, it, fear is specific, there's something that you know what it is and you know what is chasing you, so to speak, versus an anxiety where the whole sky is falling and you don't really know why. But f how fear is better than anxiety because you know what you're facing. You know what you're up against and you know that whatever the thing is or things are that you're afraid of, you can grow a backbone against those things. You can grow an immunity against those things. You can grow a, um, yeah, that's a good way to put it, I guess, a backbone specifically against the things that you're afraid of and how it doesn't necessarily mean that those things go away, but you find the inner fortitude to battle the fear specifically versus an anxiety that is um, ethereal. You're not really sure what it is, right? And so we have to listen to this, name the things, embody them, what is it, and then how do we grow courage against the things we're afraid of? See, because fear, you, it's a thing you can battle and overcome and win. Addictions, whatever it is. Whereas anxiety generalized, you're not sure what you're fighting. You're not sure what the monster under the bed is, so to speak, right? Now, um, Pete Rollins um, describes this next thing better than I can. Uh, so I recommend listening to like pe people like Peter Rollins who, who can put this stuff into words better than I can. But anxiety is a... Um, a lot of times anxiety can be you're afraid of something that's going to happen. You're afraid of something's going to happen. You don't know what it is, but you're afraid of something that, that hasn't happened yet. And Pete Rollins says that that's actually wrong, looking at anxiety. Um, he says that uh, you get an anxiety because something you feel like is going to happen in the future. But he, he talks about how the whatever gives you anxiety, the thing has already happened. It's already happened. And so the trauma of something that has happened... Is all has already happened to you, and that's why you ha have anxiety. Not because of something that's coming, but something that has already happened that you cannot name. The trauma was too hard. The trauma was too malicious, or um, it, it cut you down. And it's too traumatic, and so you can't name it. You can't talk about it. You can't discuss it. And because you can't, 
the trauma was too thick. It was too, it was too much that, um, and you're unable to put it into words, making it a specific fear that now you have this generalized anxiety and you think it's something that's going to happen to you, but it's already done. It's a, actually it's something that's already happened to you somewhere in your childhood, something like this. And so anyway, I think those two blend together very well. I think it's amazing learning to speak out your anxieties. What is it specifically? And then growing a backbone or a resistance against what a specific fear as opposed to a generalized anxiety. Now, um, I would like to relate this to divorce. And I find this fascinating. And again, those of you who watch some of these videos where you've talked to me, you, you know I'm on a journey to find out, like, why do people divorce? Specifically, when I was really in the heart of the divorce and really struggling bad, I wanted to talk to people who divorced because I want to know, like, how did you get through this? How do you survive this? How do you, um, and I'll come back to this, um, nihilism of divorce. Now, um... No, no, I'll talk about it right now. Not, the, the, the thing about nihilism is like everything is meaningless, right? Nothing matters. Nothing you do matters. Your life isn't important. I think for the... I gotta be careful how I say this. <coughs> if you thought you would grow old with somebody and die together, or die old anyway, and live out your days... And um, you would raise your kids together and um, um, you had this trajectory, this, you know, this kind of this um, upward climbing ladder of your life, you know, and then you get into your older ages and then together, maybe retirement and then divorce. And you kind of start, um, your life starts winding down, right? You're getting older, your life winds down, your kid, you've raised your kids, they're adults now, so you don't need to see them every day. Um, they're out of the house type of a thing. Uh, and, and then and, and, and you die or your spouse dies or whatever. But there's this arc in your life. Uh, Jordan Peterson talks about this, just the continuation of narrative, a continuation of narrative where you get together, you stay together and you die old together, you know, and you raise your kids, your kids are out of the house. Um, divorce challenges everything you thought your life would be. And so you thought there eventually would come a time where you grow old, your spouse dies maybe, and then you don't see your spouse every day. Um, and you expect that that comes with time and with age. And then there comes a time where your kids grow up, they go off to college, they go out on their own, whatever it is, and then you don't see your kids every day. And that comes over time. Or what you perceive will come over time, and that'll happen later in your life. Divorce thrusts you into a nihilistic viewpoint because you thought that's the way your life would go. And then, all of a sudden, you don't see your spouse every day, and you don't see your kids every day. Um, what you thought would happen eventually happens immediately, and it really does a trauma on you. And so because of that, um, I'm running into people all the time in the divorce community that are some have been divorced once or twice, usually after the second one. But, um, and they're people like my age. They're not, they're still young, fairly young. And they're like, I will never marry again. Never. I learned my lesson. Men and women. In fact, I've talked to two different people that don't know each other. One's a man, one's a woman. And they both said the exact same thing. Um, they said, you know, I believe in divorce. Uh, excuse me. I believe in marriage for other people. I don't believe in, in marriage for myself. Again. I believe in marriage for other people and I hope, you know, people get married and work their lives out, but I don't believe in it for myself anymore. And I thought that was very telling, uh, a man and a woman that didn't know each other, uh, who've been married and divorced and they say these kind of things. And I'm hearing this a lot now, even just this last week, probably two different times, um, talking to divorced people who are like, no, 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 I, I'll never do that again. I mean, they're just swearing off altogether, right? Marriage. And, and there's something that I realized that for men and women both, and perhaps I'm going to say it for men, um, again, not because of, it, this is divorce court mafia stuff. This is divorce court, ma court mafia stuff. Um, when you've lost the trauma of like losing a home, losing friendships, losing a community that you were in, of course, losing your spouse, that's the worst part of it. Uh, well, your spouse and your child, um, and you're thrust into that nihilistic 
future that you thought would happen later in life happens immediately, the trauma of that is too much for people. And so you're finding people, I'm finding people that are just swearing it off, never again. And it gives this anxiety to you about um, being married. And so people are swearing it off altogether. Now, the good part of this is all the things that happen in divorce, a uh, 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 broken heart, um, the loss of your loved one, the loss of the person that you thought would be with you forever, um, the, the loss of seeing your children every day, the loss of your income, the loss of finances, the loss of time. Um, and then when people are saying, and again, because I'm part of the divorce community, I'm learning this stuff as I go. People that are saying, like, I'll never do that again. It's too much. They're able to transition from the anxiety that is thrust upon them at divorce. Because you don't know where your life is going to be. You don't know what is going to happen next. You don't know the future of yourself, your spouse, or your ex-spouse, your kids. Um, uh, and, and then later on when the divorce settles and a year or two later, a couple years later, things hopefully start to settle down a little bit. And you get into these rhythms of life, of being single, whatever. And then you start to rebuild yourself, right? And then later on, a couple years later, you're able to voice the anxiety and call it a fear now. And you know specifically what it is. And so these people are saying, like, I'll never divorce, uh, excuse me, I'll never marry again. Um, in my opinion, that's actually pretty rational. And, and actually, it's actually smart. And, and, and they're able to say, like, look, uh, and, and here's the thing that I find. It's not that people don't want to remarry. They don't want to be romantic. It's not that they don't want to date or fall in love, uh, remarry, settle their lives again with other, with, uh, with uh, maybe let's say a new person. Um, it's not that they don't want that. They do. Most people, I feel like they do. They would love to remarry. But they don't want to go through divorce again. They don't want to go through divorce again. It's too much. It's too hard. It, the trauma's too much. Excuse me. And so, specifically, they're saying, I'll never marry again. Not that they won't love. Not that they won't maybe date. Not that they won't try again. But they're not marrying again. And in a way, I kind of have to pat the divorced community on the back and just being able to say it, because then you're 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 verbalizing the trauma. And this is something that Peter Rollins talks about. He says, you know, the thing that you can't speak, the trauma that you can't talk about, and we all have it. The trauma that you can't name and talk about always finds a way to speak, uh, and that's actually a video for a different time. But um, you almost have to pat people on the back and be proud of them, in my opinion. Because they're facing the trauma. They're facing the trauma, in my opinion. And and um, they're saying, I can't do that again. I won't do that again. And so these are people that are not divorcing themselves from love. They're not divorcing themselves from commitment. They're not divorcing themselves from um, trying to be a good father or stepfather or whatever that comes next after divorce. Um, They're divorcing themselves from divorce. They're not divorcing themselves from love. They're not divorcing themselves from commitment or relationship, romance, whatever. They're they're divorcing themselves from divorce. And, oh, I got a lot to say about that. I won't right now because of time. But, um, I will, I will, um, two things real quick. There's this song that I have listened to, and I remember when I heard it, the first time I heard it, man, I just, man, it just cut me down. And this was, I mean, back when I was still married. And my ex, she loved this show. Uh, it was a Canadian show. I think it's the longest running Canadian TV show called Heartland. Great show, wholesome show. You, the whole family can watch it. It's, uh, it's, real, it's real great, real earthy, real fantastic, actually. But there was a song in there. Um, I think it's called... I don't know what the song is called, but I was listening to it again the other day. And there's a point in the song where I think is right on. And it just says this. And it's a beautiful song. It we won't, it's not as a, yeah, it's a wonderful song. And part of the chorus, it says, in the beginning, talking about love, right? Loving somebody. In the beginning, it came from above. 
Let there be love. Everybody needs it, but many give up. Their spirit is crushed. They try and can't trust. But love will love can win out, and it must. Let me read that again. In the beginning, it came from above. Let there be love. Everybody needs it, but many give up. Their spirit is crushed. They try and can't trust. But love can win out, and it must. Looks like my kiddo's here. I'm going to cut this video short. I'll do another one soon. Love you guys. Have a great Sunday.